All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about myths of golf balls. I know golf balls get pretty expensive. A premium dozen golf balls can be as much as $50. And there's other cheap golf balls out there. Maybe you can buy a dozen or 15 golf balls for $15. So what's the difference? What's a better golf ball? What should you be looking for? I'll tell you what, manufacturers, golf ball manufacturers, don't want you to know this information because you may not spend as much money if you do this. So first off, let's talk about what's the difference between a premium golf ball and a lower end golf ball. So there's a big misconception with this. Actually for players that are really sporadic, maybe your book of ball curves a lot, you hit a lot of balls out of bounds, uh, you really get a lot of slice or hook on the ball at times, you actually may be at a disadvantage if you play a premium golf ball. And what a premium golf ball is, is it's built to where with a driver, it can still go really long, but then with the shorter shots, it can get a lot of spin on it. So a premium golf ball typically is gonna spin a little bit more than your cheaper golf balls. So if you're wild off the tee, you don't want that spin. As that ball starts to spin really fast and it gets spinning sideways, it's gonna get a slice or a hook on there and that's what can really get you in trouble. So playing, um, you know, typically what would you consider like a pinnacle or a top flight golf ball is usually gonna have less spin on it and it's gonna get you overall a little bit more distance because it takes the spin off and it goes a little bit straighter. So if you're really struggling getting way too much curve on your golf ball and you're, you're spending a lot of money for premium golf balls, you may be wasting a little bit of money there. So it depends on your level. Now for better golf golfers, players that aren't losing very many golf balls, I definitely recommend going for the premium golf ball. That way it'll actually stick on the greens. That's another thing, if, it, if you have soft greens, you don't need as much spin. If you're playing hard PGA Tour greens, the ball's gonna roll out a lot. Well, you need a ball that's gonna have a lot of spin on it and really grab when it hits the turf. So when, when we're talking about this, another thing that, that can save you a lot of money is getting X out or practice or overrun golf balls. So there's two big differences here. Um, overrun, X out, or you know practice golf balls, you'll see them that are marked down. The only difference there is there's some type of cosmetic flaw in the golf ball. So let's pretend it's a Titleist golf ball and they miss the little dot above the eye. This, the ink comes down, it doesn't hit the golf ball, or maybe there's a little tiny smudge on the golf ball somewhere. They don't want that golf ball going out and paying full price for it, so they throw that into their overruns and they'll sell those for a, quite a bit less than the new premium golf balls that are in the package. Now the ball itself is absolutely the same. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's gonna play just as well as a normal golf ball, but for less price. So you can save yourself some good money from there. Now refurbished golf balls are the ones that people pull out of the water or they find and reuse them. Those are totally unusable. I mean, you won't necessarily be able to tell a difference on each one, but who knows if it's been at the bottom of the lake for six months, six years, 10 years, it could be anything. So those aren't necessarily gonna perform as well. So I'd, I'd stay away from the refurbished golf balls if you really want some good performance out of those. Um, another misconception with, with golf balls is when they say this ball is the longest ball that there is. So I'll give you an example. I'm not gonna name the manufacturer or the rep that told me this. This is from a rep from the actual company said, you know, they had a new distance golf ball and they said, this is the longest golf ball we've ever made. This is the longest golf ball on the market. And you measure it and, and they even said that the USGA said, hey, look, this ball is so long that if you don't have your tolerances really tight, if you make any of them that are a little too hot, then you may have to scrap the whole heap because they're gonna be illegal. You're not gonna be able to use them in tournaments. So they went out, they produced these golf balls, big name brand that you've probably heard of before. And you know, he's really talking like they're, they're really, really long. So we asked him, he said, hey, you know, cut all the, you know, the fluff. How much longer is it really than your normal premium golf ball? So if you put it on a robot, you hit it 300 yards down the fairway, how much farther does this golf ball go than all the other golf balls you've had out for years? And he said it goes usually about a yard to a yard and a half longer. So the distance golf balls aren't really gonna get you that much more distance. It's not really worth paying uh, extra money just because one says distance on it. Modern golf balls from a good company, they're all gonna go about the same distance. You just need to get the one that has the right amount of spin for you. So if it gets too much spin, the ball may shoot up in the air and you may lose some distance, but the golf ball itself, when hit on a robot, they're all going to go really, really far. So that's a, a good thing to keep in mind uh, there too. Also, the last thing here that is really confusing to people is the logos. And the logos don't really mean anything. Every ball is long and soft and all that kind of stuff on the logo. 
that doesn't really mean a lot. You really need to go out and play with the golf ball, see how much spin you get on there. So just because the golf ball says this is a so-and-so long and soft golf ball or super long golf ball, it doesn't mean it's going to get you more distance. You may hit that one shorter than a ball that doesn't have a distance logo on there. So just be sure to try out the golf balls, find which one works best for you, find the golf balls that you like, save yourself a little bit of money, maybe by using X outs or practice balls if you're really on a budget. But if you're serious about your golf, you're a good player, you got to get the premium golf balls. You got to play with new golf balls that are in good shape. Once they get scuffs, tears, cuts on them, anything like that, you're going to have to throw them away and use them as a practice ball or something like that. So hopefully that helps you guys uh, to save a little bit of money and have a good time on the course. Good luck to you guys. I'll see you all soon. All right, guys, so I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button now. That really helps us to grow the channel, to get more popular, and to be able to create some more content for you guys. Also, click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when we have our latest, greatest videos. We're going to be focusing a lot on getting more distance in the future, so you don't want to miss out on those videos. As a bonus for you guys today, I'm going to go over the number one lag mistake in a video that's coming up here in a second. I'm going to play a preview of that video. Go ahead and click the link that pops up in the screen or down below in the description. You'll be able to get instant access to that video so you can start picking up some more distance uh, right now. Plus, you're going to get five bonus videos on top of that. So good luck to you guys. I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. If I do it this way versus holding that position, exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 